Hey, how are you doing? Is there one surfboard to rule them all? That's the question I posed to myself and did some digging to answer. The Daily Driver. It's meant to be the board that you can use for most conditions you encounter. Not a specialist board, but one that you can use in two foot average waves and six foot pumping waves. It could also be called the perfect single quiver travel board. I looked at a whole lot of videos and websites and came up with five boards that I think would suit me as a daily driver. But first, if you've watched my videos, you'll know I had a Pizel Phantom and didn't like it. So I've discounted it, even though it's one of the most popular daily drivers. For me, it was too wide on the nose and it caught on hard turns and cutbacks. So it's out. But the Pizel Mini Ghost is in. It's Noel Salas's favorite daily driver. The wide point is forward of center. It's got boxy rails and a big nose up front, allowing more foam under your chest for good paddling while still maintaining a high performance nose outline. It's got a fairly wide squash tail for that lift and drive, but there's a hip to allow for maneuverability. It's relatively low entry rocker with a curve extending all the way through to the end for speed, but still allowing you to hang in the pocket waves. There's a subtle double concave going through the tails and then it's flat out the end for speed and control. So number one for consideration, the Pizel Mini Ghost. I should say that I bought the Pizel Red Tiger thinking that it would be a daily driver for me, but it's really ended up as my small wave high performance shortboard. Definitely not a groveler and not really suited to over four foot either, although I've ridden it in solid six foot waves. It's really best for one to four foot good waves with some curve in the face. It's a very fast board with that extreme double concave and V. Option number two for me is the Lost Uber Driver XL. The Board Shop UK voted it one of the top five daily drivers for 2023. A short board with more volume, wide point forward of center to allow it to carry that volume under the chest for easy paddling. It's got a slightly wider nose than the Pizel Mini Ghost, but the rails have been pulled down to reduce that volume effect. Fairly low rocker throughout, with a single to double concave and a slight V out the tail for that maneuverability. Again, a fairly wide squash tail. I've got a Lost RNF 96 for summer grovelly waves at one to three feet. Noel Salas talks it up as a daily driver for one to six feet, but mine's an EPS and I wouldn't want to ride it in big waves, so I've discounted it. So option number two for me is the Lost Uber Driver XL. Option number three for me is the Channel Islands Happy Every Day. Like all the boards so far, it's carrying volume with a slightly wide nose, but the rails are pinched in. As with all boards in this category, the rocker and the bottom contours are designed to deliver speed, and they've all got squash tails to help with that lift and drive. The rocker on this board though is staged. It's got low relative entry rocker up front, and it's got a good lift out the back. The contours, single to double concave, are designed to help with that speed. The Channel Islands Happy Every Day seems to make a lot of people happy, so it's in for me. Right, option number four is the JS Industries Zero Gravity. It's got a squash tail for two to six foot surf. Rocker is medium, front and back. The concaves on this board are slightly different though. It's got a single with a double sitting inside of it, but it's got JS Industries reverse single concave, being deeper under the front foot and shallower at either end. It's got medium full rails to carry volume and help it get it through those flat sections. It's got that high performance nose outline that I like. Woolly at Woolly TV rode it in waist to well overhead and really liked it in the bigger waves, but said it could grovel too. So the JS Zero Gravity is a great option for me as option number four. The fifth and final option is Kale Brock's favorite everyday surfboard from a couple of years back, the Sharpie Inferno 72. Of all of the daily drivers I've looked at, it's by far the most high performance oriented of them. Of course, it's a squash tail. The rocker is medium front and back. The wide point sits at center, which makes it a little bit more difficult to paddle but the single to double concave through the fins is meant to offset that curve and deliver speed, which apparently it does in spades. It's got medium rail. 
all in all, I would say that this is a true hybrid between a daily driver and a high performance shortboard, even though it's pitched as a daily driver for two to six foot serve. So that's the final option, the Sharpie Inferno 72. So that's it. I've got five boards to consider for me as a daily driver. Number one, the Pizel Mini Ghost. Number two, the Lost Uber Driver XL. Number three, the Channel Islands Happy Every Day. Number four, the JS Industries Zero Gravity. And finally, number five, the Sharpie Inferno 72. I'm in my 60s, I weigh 82 kgs or around 181 pounds, and I'm 180 centimeters tall or 5 feet 10. Just like volume is your friend when you're in bigger waves, volume is also your friend when you grow older. Kelly Slade has just put a couple of liters into his boards, and I don't think it's just because he's put on a couple of pounds in weight. I typically ride 36 to 37 liters in my boards. For this comparison though, I've looked at 35 to 37, because if I'm going to travel with only one board, then I'm more likely to encounter more powerful waves so I can drop a little bit in litres. I want a board as short as possible with the volume I'm after, as well as high performance as possible. A lot of you surf boards under six feet. I can't and still feel comfortable in bigger waves. So I'm seeking a board between six foot and six foot two with volume. I'm also a PU guy. I've had EPS boards, but I find I can't ride them in bigger waves, and they're really only suitable for me for grovelier waves, like my RNF 96. In looking at these boards, I've stuck to the stock dimensions. The final thing I'll say is that I haven't ridden any of these boards. That's not unusual when you're looking to buy a new board, especially if you're moving away from something you know. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know I'm a pretty big supporter of Pizel, but I wanted to look across the range of boards available here for this comparison. Of the five boards I've chosen, I've handled four of them in shops. The only one I couldn't get hold of was the Lost Uber Driver XL. For the Pizel Mini Ghost, I can get a 6 one by 20 by 2 and 11 sixteenths that comes out at 35.8 litres. A Lost Uber Driver XL at 6 foot by 20.75 by 2.58 comes in at 35.5 litres. For the Channel Islands Happy Every Day, a 6 one at 20 and a half by 2 and 5 eighths comes in at 35.1 litres. The JS Zero Gravity at 6 one at 20 by 2 and 5 eighths for 34.5 litres, close enough to 35 for me. And the same with the Sharpie Inferno 72 with dims of 6 foot by 20.25 by 2.8 at 34.7 litres. Close enough. Which board I choose then comes down to the performance of the board and the reviews that I've watched, the discussions I've had with people about the board, and the attributes of the board. Noel Sellis chose the Pizel Mini Ghost as his favourite daily driver. He said it's got speed in small waves, holds in bigger surf, and it suits his top to bottom surfing. Now Sellis is a way better surfer than me. He rides five foot seven, but the performance that he identified makes the Mini Ghost attractive to me as a daily driver. However, in the other reviews that I've looked at and the discussions that I've had, it seems that the Pizel Mini Ghost really suits good small waves, doesn't work as a daily driver should in a variety of wave types and conditions across two to six foot. So I've struck it off my list. With the Lost Uber Driver XL, it's described as a daily driver but from the reviews that I've watched, it really seems to be suited to two to five feet. Noel Salas calls it a high performance shortboard for one to four foot. And that kind of discounts it for me as I'm after a daily driver for two to six feet. Now I do want a board with more volume, which this board has, but it seems to emphasize friendliness over high performance. So the Lost Uber Driver XL is out. I want to take a moment to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you like this video by hitting the subscribe button over there. It'll help me to make more videos like this. The Channel Islands Happy Every Day looks like a good board. Wooly over at Wooly TV rode in everything from waist to well overhead, and he was particularly happy with it in the bigger waves. Now a daily driver is meant to work in two to six feet. 
I want to be on a board that I don't have to think about when it's six foot, rather than a board that I have to surf carefully. In looking around, it seems like the Happy Every Day works in everything from two foot mush to six foot good waves. So that's a keeper for me. The JS Industries Zero Gravity has the look of a board I'm after. High performance nose and outline, good volume, and the reviews are good all around. Willie over at Woolly TV said it works very well in everything from two to six foot surf. In watching the videos though, it seems a little less friendly in two foot surf and a little more friendly in six foot surf than the Channel Islands Happy Every Day. But this board is a keeper for me so far. With the Sharp Eye Inferno 72, the Stab in the Dark review after Taj Burroughs chose it as the Stab in the Dark winner in 2021 highlights the board as really a high performance short board that works best in one to four feet rather than the everyday board that Kale Brock identified it as. So that knocks it out. Okay, I'm left with two boards, the Channel Islands Happy Every Day and the JS Industries Zero Gravity. They both suit the conditions of a daily driver, from two foot to six foot, from mushy waves to really good waves. So they're both up for consideration as my daily driver. I regularly surf at three different spots. The first one is my local beach break. During the summer, it can be, you know, relatively soft waves from two to five feet. During the autumn and winter, it can be anything from two to three foot little barrelly waves to four to six foot really barrelly waves and then everything in between. The second break that I surf at is up north on the east coast at a estuary bar. That wave, which is good at sort of two to five foot generally, not as powerful as my local beach break, but you know it's long, there's a left and a shorter right and it's just a really lovely break to surf at. The third break that I surf at is a very long left hand point break. It's got punch, it's got power, it works in anything from two to eight foot. It starts maxing out over eight foot. It's one of the premier waves in New Zealand and I like surfing there. Both the Channel Islands Happy Every Day and the JS Industry Zero Gravity would work at those three breaks that I regularly surf as well as the other breaks that I surf at infrequently. Although I think the Zero Gravity would have a slight edge at the big left hand point break that I surf. Decision time. If I had to choose one surfboard to suit me as a daily driver at the places that I regularly surf at, I'd choose the Channel Islands Happy Every Day. The dimensions would be 6'1 by 20 and a half by 2 and 5 eighths at 35.1 litres. It seems to me that this board would be ideal for the New Zealand conditions and for me that I typically encounter. However, if I was going to travel overseas and I could only take one board, I'd take the JS Industries Zero Gravity at 6'1 by 20 by 2 and 5 eighths for 34.5 litres. I expect that I would be encountering more powerful waves in that smaller two foot range up to that six foot range. So I think that the Zero Gravity would be better for me in those kinds of conditions. Those are my thoughts on a daily driver for me, one board to rule them all. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on these boards and if you have any suggestions on other boards that I might have had a look at. In the meantime, I hope you subscribe to the video, press the like button and I'll see you again soon.